Okay, so let's talk about configuring a GRE tunnel. Now, here in Packet Tracer, I have a, a simple network. I've got different routers on either end. And we're going to pretend like this connection between the two is a internet connection. So uh, let's say both of these are different sites. So we've got site one over here, site two over here, both of which are connected to the internet. And we're going to put a GRE tunnel between the two of them. Now, I have IP addresses set for my PCs, and then for my routers, I've got a serial IP address, or an IP address on the serial interface, an IP address on their gigabit ethernet interface. And we've got really basic configurations on both routers. So the only thing we really have in place at the moment is a uh, is the IP address configurations and host name and some basic security. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to create a tunnel or between site A and site B over this internet connection. And what we'll do, what, what tunneling does, is it basically lets us run private IP addressing between two different sites. So that tunnel makes it look like, even though we might be going through an entire internet connection, multiple networks, multiple routers, the tunnel makes it look like we're going over a wide area network connection, a single point-to-point -point connection. Now, this is kind of similar to a VPN. A VPN does tunneling as well. And a lot of things we do here as we configure GRE are going to be things that we do when we set up a VPN, but there's one huge difference, and that is GRE does not do encryption. VPNs do. Uh, you will sometimes actually see a VPN created using GRE as a tunneling protocol and then something else as an encryption protocol like IPsec. And in that case, we call it an IPsec VPN, and GRE is just one of the tools it's using. Um, but GRE does give us that tunneling ability. So here's how we're going to configure this. We're going to create a tunnel adapter. We're going to give it an IP address in this range, 172.16.3.0 slash 30, which is going to be the address for our, G our GRE tunnel. And then we'll configure the same thing over here, and then we'll route to our remote networks using that tunnel interface. So let's open up R1 here, and let's see what this is going to look like. I'm going to go to my CLI. Log in, privilege exec mode. All right, config T. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my tunnel interface. So it's interface, if I can type here, tunnel zero. And that creates my interface and it immediately brings it online. Now, it's not doing anything at the moment, but it is technically active. So we're going to set an IP address the same way we would for any other interface, 172.16.3.1. And we're going to make it a slash 30. Again, if I can type. All right. We also need to set the tunnel mode. So it's going to be this. Tunnel mode GRE IP. Which basically, tunnel configuration, set the mode is going to be a GRE tunnel running over IP. So we've got to set the mode. We also need to set the tunnel source. Now the tunnel source is going to be my side of it. So I can do an interface or an IP address. So it's going to be tunnel source is going to be my serial 000. So that's going to be the beginning of my tunnel. And then I need to set a tunnel destination. And that's going to be the IP address of the device that I'm connecting to. So my tunnel is going to cross all of these internet connections here. It's going to start out with this interface. It's going to end up at this IP address, which is 209.165.104.130. So I'm going to go to tunnel destination 209.165.104.130. And that brings my line protocol up. Now that's kind of a misnomer. I, can, I now have a source and destination so I can connect and I can see that there's a tunnel active here. Uh, I can't actually send anything over it yet because I need to configure the other side as well. So I'm going to end out here, and then I'm going to do one more thing, is I'm going to put in my route. So this destination network is going to be the 172.162.24 network, and it's going to be reachable using, and I'm going to use this GRE tunnel IP address. So wrong thing. There we go. 
So it's going to be IP, IP route 172.16.2.0. 255, 255, 255, and my next hop is going to be 172.16.3.2. That's going to be my next hop to get there. Eh, hope if I was in config mode when I did that. IP route. I need a space there. Okay, that worked better. All right, so now let me do a show run, and we'll see right here is our tunnel at, uh, configuration. So interface tunnel zero, this is the IP address from my end of the tunnel. This is a tunnel source where it begins. This is a tunnel destination where it ends. Now you're also going to see right here, I did not put this in. This is something that the iOS did on its own. My MTU size is now 1476. MTU is maximum transmission unit. That's the largest amount of data we can move. Now, normally the MTU is 1500, but GRE adds 24 bytes of overhead. So it becomes 1476, and we have to specify that the iOS does it for us, but we specify that's the maximum size of data that we can send because of that additional overhead from GRE. As we keep going down, we'll see right here, here's my IP route to get to that network using the tunnel interface IP address, and this is key, it's not the IP address of the serial interface on the remote device, it's the tunnel interface on the remote device. Okay, so let me go to R2, and we'll do the same thing here, and we'll configure our tunnel. So log in and config t interface tunnel zero so i'm going to set my ip address 172.16.3.2 make it a slash 30. i'm going to set my tunnel source and here i'm also connected to s000 notice by the way i'm doing them in slightly different order it doesn't really matter which sequence you do it in, just as long as you get it all in place. Tunnel destination is going to be, we minimize this, 209. Dot, that's supposed to be 165.104.129. Fix my little typo there. There we go. Okay, um, so 209.165.104.129. Let's try this again. 209.165.104.129. And then I need to set my tunnel mode, which is GREIP. Okay, and then last but not least, we need to set our IP route because you got to have a route going both ways, right? So it's going to be IP route 172.16.1.0, 255, 255, 255.0 for slash 24. And its next hop is going to be, remember, it's the 172.16.3.1. It is the tunnel interface. Now at this point, I should be able to ping that tunnel interface. So 172.16.3.1 is the remote side, and yes, I can get there just fine. So can I ping, and I'm doing this from the router, so can I ping my PCA, 172.16.1.10? Keep opening up the wrong window. There we go. Ping 172.16.1.10. And first one times out because of ARP, but after that we ping just fine. Now that's useful, but the ultimate test is can I ping from PCA to PCB? So I'm going to come down here to PCB, go to my desktop, and command prompt. And here's our big test, 172.16.1.10. And we are pinging just fine. Now, here's the other thing. I know I can get there. Am I going through the tunnel? Let's trace route that. Trace route 172.16.1.10. 1 
and you'll see we go from 2.1 R gateway 3.1 which is a tunnel interface on the remote side to the PC so let's talk about how this works All right, when R1 gets something destined for the 172.16.2.0 network it's going to see that it has to send it out over that its next hop is 172.16.3.2 and we see that right here when we do our show IP route it's got to get to 172.16.3.2 so it looks up how do I get to 172.16.3.2 well I have a tunnel here with an address of 172.16.3.1 so that's how I'm going to get it I'm going to send it out over the tunnel and then we uh, it goes to the running config where it sees tunnel 0 172.16.3.1 I'm gonna send it out serial 000, so I'm gonna take my packet that's destined for the 2.0 network I'm gonna encapsulate it with a destination of 3.1 I'm gonna send it out serial 000 and my outer packet is gonna have this ultimate destination so the outer packet is gonna be the internet IP addresses the packet inside of it the tunneled packet is gonna use these IP addresses. It sends it across, it shows up at R2 on serial 000, um, and it sees, hey, this is a tunneled packet. So it takes off that outer packet that we used when we crossed the internet, and we take out that inner packet that we used uh, for our tunnel interface, and that's what we process at the remote site. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. And that is how we configure a GRE tunnel on a Cisco device.